Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. This is a video I have been trying to make for quite a while. One of you requested it, but based on available inventory, it has taken me a while to get to it. And that is comparing the 2024 Honda HRV to the 2024 Honda CRV. We're gonna knock it out today. I'm just gonna be able to use what was available in inventory for once. We do have vehicles that are the same color, so that helps, but there obviously are some differences between the two models. The base price for the HRV that is only available with a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder is $24,100. When we take a look over here to the 2024 Honda CRV, its base price is $29,500, or you can step up to the hybrid version that is going to have a base price of $33,350. Those are some of the chief differences. The price and obviously the fact that if you want a model that has a hybrid powertrain, well, as of 2024, the HRV simply doesn't have that. Both were fully redesigned for the 2023 model year. That's going to carry over into this 2024 model year. So let's see what the differences and similarities are between these two models. Looking from the front end, you can see the differences. And that's really, in a way, a nice thing because it separates things out. The HRV and the CRV don't really look like one another. That's a good thing. A lot of people seem to like that. But tell me what your thoughts are. Obviously, the grill on the CRV on the left is going to be larger and wider. And then we'll have the smaller grill. It fits the size of the subcompact SUV, crossover SUV of the HRV over there on the right. And while there are some minor similarities between the two as far as the headlight design goes, they still separate themselves out with the turn signal indicator being on the top of the headlight housing with the daytime running lights. And I know a lot of you, I'm sorry if you get tired of hearing me say this, but for those who don't know, that flickering effect is not really happening in real life. It has to do with the shutter speed of the camera I'm using. That's a common issue you see with a lot of newer cameras that are used here on YouTube. And we'll see that same effect here over on the right-hand side with the HRV. But you'll notice that you have a completely different look with the turn signal housing still going to have a lot of light here that's a good thing and we'll have active air curtains on each model as far as allowing air to go through the front end right here and then while it's smaller here on the crv you still have the active air curtains that helps to reduce drag and increase aerodynamics or should i say improve aerodynamics to help out with things and you'll find honda sensing on both models with adaptive cruise control, road departure mitigation braking, lane keeping assist, traffic jam assist, all of that is going to be there. And when we look at the side view mirrors, we're going to notice again a different design to a degree on both. They're both really sized appropriately for both vehicles. In this case, you're going to have turn signal indicators built into both. We'll take a look from this side. Over here on the CRV, you will have blind spot monitoring, not on the HRV, but not a big deal. You'll still have your remotes for each model. This will be the remote for the CRV, or excuse me, the HRV. We're gonna have a remote start. I know a lot of you like to know about that. And obviously the remotes pretty much look the same with these two models. For those who may wish to know, that's one thing that will work across the board so you can see the same thing here that is the remote for the crv and as we work our way to the rear we'll notice that the rear portion of the hrv is a little more angled it looks a little more sporty i would say but again not something that i think most people are that worried about but you can just see the differences that's what i'm trying to show you here what the differences and the similarities are both will have the rear roof spoiler that not only looks nice, that helps to channel air over this back window when you're driving down the road, helps to keep that clean. And here's something that is available on both models, all wheel drive. Front wheel drive being the standard option, but you can opt for all wheel drive. 
And a difference here as well, if you're wanting to see differences, the taillight housing on the HRV, while it has been changed for this second generation of the HRV, it doesn't really look anything like what we have over here on the CRV. You have a little more to this model, a little bit larger vehicle with a little larger taillight housing, but overall, a very nice look with both vehicles. But the big difference, one of the absolute biggest differences, I should say, is based on not only what is under the hood, but what is available to be under the hood. Let's talk about exactly what those differences are. Under the hood of the HRV is the singular engine offering. It's a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that puts out 158 horsepower, 138 pounds feet of torque, mated to a CVT or continuously variable transmission. MPGs come in at 25 city, 30 highway, 27 combined, and 3.7 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. At least that's what's on the window sticker. In reference to the CRV, which by the way, the HRV here is an EXL. This is the hybrid sport CRV, which is going to feature a combination of the two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder and the dual motor electric system. That's why this is a hybrid model. 204 horsepower, 247 pounds feet of torque mated to an eCVT. And let's walk back here and take a look at the MPGs on this model. Obviously a little different because it is a hybrid 43 city, 36 highway, 40 combined and 2.5 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. And in the event that you're saying to yourself, well, I want to go with one of the non-hybrid trim levels, the EX, the EXL, the other trim levels that do not come hybrid, that's going to feature the 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder in the CRV, which will make 107, excuse me, 190 horsepower and 179 pounds feet of torque. A lot to remember here. So sometimes those tongue twists and brain twists might happen. In that case, instead of an eCVT as we have in this case, it will be mated to a CVT instead. When it comes to cargo capacity with the HRV, you're looking at 24 up to 55 cubic feet of space. I've laid the seats down so you can see how that looks maximized. And because I know one of the common questions I'm asked is how flat do those seats fold down? You can see that they're relatively flat, maybe not completely, but pretty close. Don't have quite the angle that some vehicles have when you do that. Now, one thing that you will find that is different here at least depending on which model of the H or CRV you go with. On the HRV, you're going to have a spare tire right there across all trim levels, no matter what. On the CRV, let's talk about cargo capacity, 36.6 to 39.3 to 76.5 cubic feet. Obviously, the higher numbers on that will be based on having the non-hybrid version Again, here's what things look like with everything maximized as far as your cargo capacity goes. But the one difference that you'll find here is that while the seats are folding flat, you can see that right here, is that if you go with the non-hybrid version of the CRV, you will have a spare tire. If you go with the hybrid version, you will have no spare tire, but instead a tire repair kit. And we'll take a look into the back seat of the HRV going to have the comfortable armrest right here and the door bin really more of a bottle holder really than a door bin as far as its size goes we will have one rear seat pocket as you can see right there with the passenger side seat and you will find a little bit of space right here as far as that goes on the rear of the center console no air conditioning vents back here and neither model is going to have a panoramic sunroof so it really doesn't matter which one you choose to purchase. If you are a fan of the panoramic sunroof, you just won't find it on either model. Tell me what your thoughts are about that. And now we'll move over here to the CRV. A little larger model with larger back doors means larger armrests and a larger door bin. And one thing you'll find here on the CRV that you won't find on the HRV is that the rear seats recline and you will also find a fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. Now there still is one rear seat pocket right here. And then we also have the rear air conditioning vents that are here in the CRV. 
as well as the dual USB ports. And to give equal time, even though I already showed you the sunroof, the conventional size sunroof in the HRV, I'll show you the one that is here in the CRV as well. And taking a look into the front seat with the HRV EXL, you can see what's here. Tell me what you think about the two interiors. Obviously, those are different from one another. We have the black interior over in the CRV. What do you think here? Obviously, this model is based on the same platform as the Honda Civic. You will find plentiful space within the glove box, basically the same amount of space in both. But one thing that's here on the HRV is the pass-through right here. You will find USB ports on each side right there, as well as up here just above the wireless charging pad, a conventional style shifter. Here's your drive mode selector, hill start assist, brake hold mode is right here, and your power parking brake. And here is your center console. Give you a good look down inside there. There is a lot of space in there for this particular size of SUV. And once again, a little more space throughout, not only with the size of the doors, but overall interior as far as the CRV goes. Comfortable armrest right here, a larger front door bin. Now here on this trim level, you will find a power driver's seat, but a manually adjustable passenger seat. And let's take a look at the differences here or similarities, we should say, on the dash design as far as the way everything looks. There is the glove box. Now you won't find a wireless charging pad here on the hybrid sport trim level, but that is available on higher trim levels. There is the USB options here and the 12 volt right there. And again, a conventional shifter. So between the two, most people seem to be in favor of a conventional style shifter compared to a push button shifter. And the same basic functionality can be found right here with your drive mode selector, and everything else that we looked at earlier. You know what all is there. And there is a little bit of a difference here with the design of the center console. Still plenty of space in there. A lot going on here, but let's check out what the driver is going to see in each model. We'll take a quick look at the door panel. Everything that you would likely expect to find here as far as the controls and the functionality. Your traction control is right here. This is a tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. You just drop the lever right here to take care of that. And we'll hop inside and let you see what happens. We'll hit our push button start right here and take a look at the instrument cluster, the digital instrument cluster. Pretty simple to use, pretty simple to figure out as far as all of that goes. We can hit the home button right here and go into a lot of different features and information that you can get through. I'm not going to go through everything individually, but you can see what all is there. Now, here is the control for your headlights and for the turn signals and blinkers. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, some of you do, some of you don't. And you can control your front and rear window wipers right here. And in this case, we're going to have the 9-inch touchscreen. It's very simple to use, very simple to operate, a different look, but it's just as simplistic as what Honda has had for several years. I like that. That's a good thing. You can go into vehicle settings right here and make changes to whatever you need to get information. All that good stuff is there. And something that will be identical on both vehicles, regardless of touchscreen size, is going to be the multi-view rear view camera. Three different views, as you can see, depending on what you need to know about and what about driving modes? Well, let's take a look at what we have with all of that. There's normal. We'll let you see the graphics that come up. Then we can go into econ mode. You also have snow mode. And then we'll work our way back up. And you'll notice that there doesn't seem to be a sport mode. Well, you don't actually get into sport mode with the drive mode selector. You can go back here into drive with your shifter. You see the D right there or you can go into the S right there, which is going to be sport mode. And you will find the same features and functionality here on the driver's side door panel with the CRV. Once again, you can go in here and turn traction control on or off. You have a tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel, push button start, and the same look with the dash as we saw earlier. You can still go through the exact same information here by pushing the home button a couple of times and scrolling your way through with the scroll wheel. 
Same thing with headlight and tail lights. You turn them on and off right here, as well as those things called turn signals. And your front and rear window wipers are the same way. And steering wheel matic controls, I didn't talk about that over there so much on the HRV, but you can see what's here. But one thing is different. And remember, we're going by based on what is available in inventory today. That's why some of these are different because they're different trim levels and different models. We just have to work with what we have. These are not shifter paddles right here, believe it or not. They are controls for regenerative braking using kinetic energy to help keep the battery charged. And you can determine how that works. If you want it to work more aggressively, do a little more. Well, you can use that plus. If you want to turn it down, you can do it right there. And in this case, we're going to have the seven inch touchscreen, which this is available on both models, depending on trim level. This way, at least you can see a little bit of what's here and what's available for each one. So if this one's not necessarily easier to use, the other one's not more challenging to use, I should say. It's just that they have a different look, but both equally easy to learn and use. You can go in and make a lot of changes depending on what's going on with the vehicle. And like I said earlier, you do have the same camera views on both with the multi-view rear view camera that you can use. And you also have the dual air conditioning here. We took a look at a lot of this earlier, but one thing I will show you here is that you have the heated seats, not ventilated, but we're finally getting to that, getting into that time of year in Northwest Louisiana where I don't have to worry about that so much, but we're not quite there yet. And I'll give equal time here on the HRV just so you can see that you have the same dual zone climate control. Everything looks the same. You still only have heated seats, but in case you were saying, well, you didn't cover that in the HRV. Now you can't say that. Okay. We're going to start out our test drive portion of the video with the CRV Hybrid Sport. And it definitely has a comfortable ride. You have plenty of room within the interior for the driver and the passengers, be it that I haven't had a chance to have someone else drive and I could ride in the back seat and really tell you how much room there is back there as far as how comfortable it is going down the road. But just based on what we did earlier in the video, there's plenty of space back there. I don't think it would be an issue on long road trips. You have a lot of room, not only for your driver and your passengers, but also for cargo. Depending on the situation, you can lay those rear seats flat or just one side if you want to do that. And this being the hybrid model, there's no difference that I can personally tell between the way it rides between this and the non-hybrid. Also, even though I haven't had a chance to really put things to the test, I can't tell a big difference between front wheel drive and all wheel drive as far as the way it handles or anything else regard, regarding that particular part of the vehicle. But the technology here, as I mentioned earlier, easy to learn, easy to use. It doesn't matter if you have a seven inch touchscreen or the nine inch. Just nice to know that you have some options where that is concerned. You can do whatever you'd like to do with that. But obviously, if you're looking to have the best gas mileage between the HRV and the CRV, well, the CRV is definitely going to give it to you when you go with the hybrid version. But overall, it's enjoyable to drive. It gets down the road just fine, regardless of which powertrain you choose to go with. And even though I don't have the non-hybrid to use today, I'm definitely uh, confident that it really doesn't matter. It just depends on your personal taste and situation. Some people may want the hybrid, some people may want non-hybrid, but both get down the road with absolutely no problems whatsoever. I can't say that one really has better performance than the other. Obviously, you have a good bit more torque here than you do horsepower. There's only a 14 horsepower difference between the two but the torque numbers are definitely a bit wider spread. But let's go change vehicles and hop into the HRV and see what the differences are between the two as far as just the overall driving experience goes. This place seems very familiar. Not sure why, as if we've been here before. Okay, we're out in the HRV now. And while the HRV is making less horsepower than the CRV, no matter which version of the CRV you go with, the power to weight ratio seems to do the HRV quite well. It gets down the road just fine. 
I don't think anybody's going to try and race their HRV, so that's not a big deal. You can still get up to speed when you need to, when you're merging into traffic, hopefully driving a little faster than the traffic is so you can get in, not driving way under the speed limit, hint, hint, to especially some of you Shreveport drivers, but I see that a little bit everywhere. But it definitely gets the job done for what it is and what you would expect it to do based on what it is. Although it would be interesting if Honda came up with a Type R. HRV, I don't think we'll ever see that, but heck, I'll drop that seed anyway. You never know. But overall, it is an enjoyable vehicle to drive. It also has a comfortable ride quality. A lot of the time when you get into a smaller vehicle like this, you do sacrifice ride quality, but not so much here. I think the HRV has a comfortable ride quality. The experience is good. It handles very well. This is the all-wheel drive version, as we saw earlier in the video, but again, I really can't say that I can tell a big difference, but I've never really put it through its paces to find out. Just average everyday driving doesn't always help in that respect, but overall, a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. Steering wheel just as adjustable as of the that of the HRV, or excuse me, CRV. Well, there's just the RVs are common, the H and the C are not. I get those mixed up. But an overall enjoyable vehicle to drive, a comfortable interior for what it is and for its size. I, there seems to be plentiful room here in the front seat, that's for sure. Uh, back seat, well, pretty good. It's not as much space as you're going to find in the CRV, but that goes without saying. Technology here, while the screen looks different, the difference between the seven inch screen that was in the CRV, but the nine inch is available, just like the one that we have right here. Both are very easy to use, very easy to learn. They look different, but that doesn't mean one is more challenging to learn or use than the other. That's one thing about Honda is their technology is nice and easy to use. So you have a lot of differences. You also have a lot of similarities here between these two models. It'll be interesting to see what everybody has to say down in the comments as to why they prefer one over the other, or maybe there's some things you would like to see that are the same on both that currently are not. There's a good question to answer. And there you go, the comparison of the high points between the 2024 Honda CRVs and HRVs. Wish I could have done the same trim level on both, but again, that comes down to what is available in inventory here at Holmes Honda. If you have two vehicles you would like for me to compare to one another, tell me down in the comments. Feel free to request videos. I will do what I can based on number one, what's available in inventory, and number two, what I can actually gain access to. So there are some limitations to that, but I will do the best that I can. So I do want to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me these two models for the day. And tell me down in the comments section, what are the primary deciding factors? If you were saying, I'm not sure if I want an HRV or a CRV, what's what you want, I guess we could say. What are the deciding factors that will determine your decision? I also want to say a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and haven't subscribed to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel just yet, please consider doing so. And if you would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.